There is nothing on channel one currently. Yes, I'll let it pick. Try and test. Ah, can you look if I believe there is a pair button? A pair, yeah. Can I press the pair button? Uh, yeah, I think so. Can you check? Speak. No, not yet, not yet. Maybe you have to push here. It's still blinking. <laughs> I'm sorry, you had to run. Wait. Try speaking. Uh, no, 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 not yet. <laughs> Tell me if I should. Try, try. No, I can't see anything. Should I push something? It's green now. Speak. No, I still can't see any. Yeah, it's still empty. But it's green. I can write to the record. It's green. It's become green. Oh, shouldn't be bad. No, not good. Is it blinking? Yes. Not anymore. Try speaking. No. No, nothing. I'm sorry. Should I try? I just pushed again. Bear. Let's try. I don't know if it was a timeout. Not yet. Now it's not blinking. Try speaking. No. No, it looks like not. I'm sorry. What? Maybe it's muted. No, it's not. Okay, it would be really funny. <laughs> no, nothing. I'm sorry. Just my voice and channel two. <laughs> sorry, this is a bit of an unexpected event. Does this mean that? Oh, did the previous thoughts were not recorded. Because uh, no, we, we I was, more, I was here. Okay. It wasn't recorded. Okay. By the way, there is still the, the, the internal microphone, so you may speak. Yeah, I mean, speak, uh, speak louder. And, uh, okay, so if, uh, if there is some chance that you yeah. want to record it. I tried. So, well, enough about myself. Uh, I'm Nicola Ah, ja, ich habe mich auf dass ich mich auf die Frage stelle, dass ich mich auf die Frage stelle, dass ich Understanding if a sentence is positive, negative, or neutral with respect to a certain topic. 
But there is a more basic form of text mining uh, that uh, we can play with uh, even without specialized tools. Like statistics on text, uh, lengths of sentences, most common words, uh, uh, numeric indicators about the writing style. They try to profile the writers uh, and uh, define their uh, writing style based on numbers and these uh, surprisingly works. So it is possible to to have a fingerprint of an author by uh, checking uh, how frequent is uh, his use of, of certain words or patterns. You can identify this pattern in the text, uh, and uh, a more basic form of text mining is visualizing the text in the form of, uh, of a word graph. In general, we would use Python as the preferred uh, language because it's uh, the one with the richest uh, library sector. Uh, for all data science, but uh, specifically for uh, text mining. Uh, with advanced uh, use cases, you would need uh, specialized libraries uh, and uh, high computational power. But for the basic use cases, uh, a local computer is more than <coughs> A typical example uh, of uh, a basic text mining exercise would be uh, read a text file process the text appropriately, and then produce a word cloud that represents with a picture the most common words we are seeing in the book. So this is an exercise I did with, uh, with my students, uh, in, um, with my web communication students. Uh, we produced uh, an animated word cloud uh, with Italian news, uh, selecting the topic of the week. So this, uh, this animation doesn't to me, and of course I speak a bit, but uh, words become larger or smaller uh, according to popularities they uh, had uh, in a recent weeks. Uh, so you, you can capture the trends visually, the news trends visually. But uh, we are trying to see what we can do using the as a tool. That one was done natively in Python and without, without uh, any use of, uh, of an office. Our built-in feature basically is basically in Python. As Python is available uh, within uh, an office, uh, uh, we have Python interpreter, interpreter field within the office. We have the Pali Unibridge. Uh, which allows to basically map internal components uh, to Python. Uh, you can use the text uh, within Python. Thanks. Just uh, one, two, three. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Just rebooted. Okay. Reboot that really? <laughs> it that Both every sides. Time. Oh, that is <laughs> Okay. I'm not going back uh, to previous slides. Uh, let's just uh, start from here. Uh, we have Python in Apache OpenOffice, and we are trying to do something that's some simple text mining without, within uh, OpenOffice. Uh, getting the text uh, is extremely easy since uh, you just uh, it is just one line of code. Actually, if you go to the user scripts or whatever you want uh, to put uh, your Python script. Uh, and uh, the, the first part uh, just gets the text of the current document. Uh, and uh, it is trivial, I can show it uh, in a proper text editor, but uh, basically it's here. Uh, uh, it's just uh, a, few, um, a few lines uh, of, uh, of code. And then you have the text available. So from now on, we are doing all the processing uh, we using the internal Python, then we will resort back to OpenOffice for uh, the kind of visualization, the very, very uh, raw visualization we, we can have uh, within the writer. writer. Writer has a lot of limitations on that. Uh, so, what uh, do we do in the Python environment? Tokenization. We strip out uh, all punctuation. Uh, Text is converted to lowercase, text uh, becomes uh, a list of words, okay, we change the data structure. We remove stop words. Why? Because otherwise, for any text we analyze, uh, we would see that and or the would be the most uh, used words, and uh, of course, we, we don't want uh, them uh, to, to skew statistics. Then we filter to remove noise, a word that is only appearing once, uh, 
is a word that can be removed. This allows us to take a very long text with a variety of words and condensate it uh, into a couple hundred uh, relevant words. And, uh, okay, we can, uh, I don't uh, want to waste uh, time on this, but again, it is a few lines of code uh, here, and you got just get, uh, uh, there, is some, there are some tricks uh, to, okay, to show. Okay, uh, th there are some tricks uh, to um, properly extract the words and uh, such, and replacing everything with space if it is not allowed. Then with the counter object uh, in Python, uh, we very can very simply summarize our uh, list uh, and just uh, extracting frequencies. So our list of words uh, with repetition is, uh, becomes a native uh, Python data structure each word and the uh, data, like uh, the word uh, computer appears 34 times. And uh, here, again, it becomes trivial to assign a popularity score to each word, just to single out the ones that are really popular and the ones that are less popular. And uh, this is what we do here. OK, the stop words removal was already done as part of the previous step. And basically here, uh, we just uh, calculate uh, the, the frequency and uh, we, we generate the counters and we compute frequencies. And now we have to go back to OpenOffice. This is uh, the, the kind of tricky part, but uh, still uh, within uh, an absolutely manageable complexity. Let's say that uh, we start uh, with uh, an open office document, and we want to append the visualization, kind of a word cloud, the visualization of word frequencies to the end of this document. Uh, then we use a cursor, and uh, this is documented uh, in, uh, in APIs, and uh, it is uh, um, the, the missing link that brings back our Python objects uh, to something that we can use in open office. So we generate the cursor, we okay, go to the end of document since we want to append the word cloud to the existing text. And with the cursors, we'll, we'll also apply style information. We are seeing it uh, in a minute. Style information, why? Because a uh, writer is very, very limited. For example, uh, all text in writer uh, has to, to be on, uh, on lines, uh, while the word cloud uh, is a much uh, more uh, <coughs> free visualization in general with the words uh, that can be freely placed. Uh, um, okay, writer does support floating objects, but uh, this would be totally overkill for our example, as if we want that, uh, we'd rather move to uh, the engine of uh, draw and uh, generate an impress slide, for example. But uh, here, if we want to stay in, uh, within writer, and we want uh, it to be done in uh, 20 lines, uh, everything, uh, we just can uh, set uh, these properties for the text we are going to write, to append uh, to the end of text, and for each word, uh, we compute uh, the right color and size uh, so that uh, it is a little bit nicer. And, uh, and all of this uh, literally takes uh, 20 lines of code. Uh, you know what is shown here. It is just uh, done here. If you remove the includes, basically, it's, uh, it's a word cloud generator in, uh, in 20 lines of code. The projector is, uh, um, has a wrong resolution, so it cannot uh, show it properly. But uh, you go from uh, here by executing the macro. This is a uh, famous inaugural speech of President Obama. And uh, if uh, we want to extract the key topics from uh, here, we just run the, the macro. And uh, this is what we get. It is still uh, extremely simple, but uh, one gets the, the idea in, uh, in writer. OK. That, that would be. So you get uh, America, American nation. Uh, you can single out the most uh, uh, <coughs> frequent words. Uh, and uh, this is as far as you get 
in, uh, in Riker with, uh, with just uh, an absolutely simple approach uh, like we did, uh, which is this. Possible improvements, uh, how to use uh, other functionality. Here there is a lot of stuff that we could improve uh, starting from uh, this very base, mm, basic use case, which is, of course, appearance. Uh, now it is too static. Uh, and uh, there, basically, one would uh, start uh, with creating something with the drawing press engine rather than uh, uh, the, the writer engine. And uh, once you are there, there you, you have native uh, floating objects that you can place uh, everywhere. Of course, uh, with that becomes complexity, since uh, now this word cloud is just a stream of words, one after each other, where uh, we put the appropriate style to each word. There we would have to compute a bounding box for uh, each word uh, and make sure they do not overlap too much. So it is substantial in a substantial amount of, uh, of new work, but uh, uh, that would be the way to, to do this. Basically, we would uh, need a positioning algorithm that uh, currently we, we just don't have. We just bump uh, it all out in uh, one line. And this for appearance. But then uh, we are within uh, a word processor. And this means we can improve the quality of uh, our uh, word cloud in ways that would be quite hard to do in other uh, contexts. For example, OpenOffice knows about uh, stemming, uh, meaning recognizing, uh, in our example, that America and American are basically the same word, share the same root word. And uh, uh, we can do that since uh, our uh, spell checker within uh, OpenOffice uh, already does it uh, the, the munch and munch population. And uh, I haven't tested it, but uh, if it was possible to interface with the, the Hanspell engine that we use for spell checking, uh, this would uh, automatically improve the quality by reducing uh, uh, each word to its most common uh, appearance uh, and uh, okay then technically the stemming and lemmatizing lemmatizing means choosing the right uh, representative between america and american for example in this case another thing that uh, we could do in an excellent way if uh, we, we wanted to improve this further is using synonyms uh, because a word cloud uh, inherently has uh, a big limitation. It mixes up uh, the significant and the meaning. The significant is the word uh, you use to express a concept, uh, and the meaning is, of course, uh, what you want to convey. Uh, so if I say, say uh, brilliant and excellent, and I want to actually say the same thing, uh, the two frequencies will be separated, and there is uh, no way to understanding uh, but we do have a synonyms engine in OpenOffice. So we could uh, resort to it uh, and uh, trying uh, to interface with the tutorials and try to cluster words with the same meaning. Uh, and again, this would be more or less the same process we've seen before, but, uh, um, but uh, with, uh, with the fact that uh, we are now going into the semantic world, uh, trying to figure out what a word actually means and not, uh, and not just uh, the, the way it looks. Another uh, improvement uh, that uh, would be possible in theory is the part of speech tagging. We do have support, uh, limited support for uh, grammar checkers. Uh, part of speech tagging means uh, find out uh, if uh, a word uh, is a noun or an adjective in good, uh, like uh, a good boy, or uh, uh, for the common good. And uh, this uh, would allow us to restrict uh, our um, word cloud to only adjectives, for example, making it uh, much more homogeneous and much nicer to see, to, to read uh, for, uh, for a, a real reader. The appearance would be the same, but uh, the meaning to a reader would be much richer. This is quite hard uh, and uh, 
yeah, uh, the, the rest is probably feasible. Here we are uh, going into something that becomes uh, uh, harder to do. While going back to stuff that we could uh, do rather easily, sentiment analysis is another thing we would be able to probably do. And uh, also decoupled from the word list things. Uh, uh, like one uh, creates word lists with uh, known bad or, uh, uh, or good uh, characterizations. And this could be implemented with a similar statistical approach, but outside the, the word cloud uh, set. And OK, we rushed a bit uh, during to the time, but that's it. Uh, thank you. If anybody has questions or wants to see the code or anything, please. Uh, uh, do you have a kind of a range? Uh, when, you, when you give ranking to the two words, you know, in the actual implementation, I mean, mm. so you give a ranking from 0 to 1. Yes. But is there a, a limit of ranking, meaning that it's just one decimal, for example, or is it uh, at the moment? I compute, uh, well, at the moment, uh, I simply take the data and compute maximum and minimum. So I assign 0 and 1 to cover uh, all the font sizes I want to cover. Okay, so so uh, it, 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 it depends on the amount of work present. Exactly, exactly. So I take the, dex, the text and uh, I, I stretch it to be always between 0 and 1. Yeah. That's because I, I was, uh, I'd say that I really, how to say, I love to use styles, but uh, I'm obsessed. Obsession. But it's hard. So the first thing that came to me is that uh, you talk, you, you've been talking about styles, but uh, in, if I'm not wrong, you, you were doing direct format. Yeah, sure. So obviously. Oh, okay, well, this so is a I thought, concept. Uh, I mean, we're not. Uh, no, no, no problem. I mean, I guess. Uh, one could prepare character styles, indeed. Uh, yeah, but I uh, think that uh, this uh, applies, could, could, be, uh, could apply if you have a limited number of, you know, uh, I mean, arrange that. That's why of the, the previous question. Yeah. Okay. Because, well, you know, yes, you can't be set on 300 sides. I think it's exactly. completely unusable. It's much better to use yeah. for macro. For macro. Okay. Yes. If you want to use set styles, uh, then you would uh, add something to map uh, to map categories to map intervals to a certain style. Yes. But it may, it may apply probably in the future implementations of sentiment or, yeah, for example, you may use some kind of. Sure. of we uh, Any other questions? Okay, we have time for one or two questions. Please. Uh, are there other subjects behind this? Uh, uh, yes, th there are more, but uh, okay, it is uh, a list of stuff words. If you see it, the proof of concept is not really complete, like. Uh, like here, for example, with you and your yes, yes. would uh, have to be removed. So, That's what I mentioned. Uh, mm. uh, are there uh, um, library function to get this uh, language dependent? Uh, yes, yes. With, with Python libraries, if you can leverage uh, the full Python, then you don't need to hard code stop words uh, as a sequence, uh, as, as a list of uh, words that you make up yourself. Uh, there are existing stop words uh, with. Uh, with most uh, uh, text processing libraries for Python, and uh, they are localized into, into languages. So uh, that is just because I was uh, doing it in 20 lines. But uh, with the same approach, uh, yes, that's perfectly feasible. Question? Yes. OK. Uh, your, so uh, in your code, you have this uh, context script. Mm -hmm. then, uh, what, what is that? Something you built yourself, or is that the interface to open it's a, No, it's a PyU, no? Yes, it's uh, the interface to open Office and LibreOffice for that ma matter. Uh, that uh, is a bridge that gives you the possibility here. You are in Python, and you, get, you, you will run this within uh, uh, Writer. But uh, this is the bridge that uh, will uh, get the text from the document to Writer. And the cursor here is uh, the one doing the opposite thing, uh, meaning bringing what you have and uh, being able to insert it into the document. And these are the, the two. But uh, yeah, the, the API is, um, is documented, and, uh, and it is just there. I, you know, just there. Uh, 
nothing to do with the grammar itself, I think. Uh, whether it's an open office thing or it's open office, also using the library. Because no, grammar checker is not native uh, in open office. So uh, it is available through extensions. Uh, and uh, the extensions use either Java or Python, and but, but it is not a native engine. There is no office, and I don't know what they internally use. Yeah, you have to find out what the internal use. Be able to express it as well. Okay, it's uh, no, it's uh, it's time to to leave the floor to to the next speaker. Remove Simon. the microphone. Yes, <laughs> I will run. You know, the, the nice thing is that everything gets recorded since it is a Wi Fi microphone. So, <laughs> so all the comments are going downstairs.